And so, uh, that was a momentous day. Uh, many of the people that signed the Declaration of Sentiments were ridiculed, uh, ostracized. Some of the men who owned businesses had to take their signatures back, but they went on and they had petitions in other cities in Syracuse and spanned out below, uh, down south. And the woman suffrage movement was on, and it grew. I was tempted to stop my uh, speech uh, as the lady came in with her children. You see, these women of the suffrage movement, they were making great sacrifices. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, you hear me uh, mention Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Uh, uh, this was a woman, a quite bright woman, who, who knew her law books, but she uh, had a family just like this lady. So you can imagine uh, having children like this and still having the audacity to stand up and want to travel the country and speak and, and demand rights. Well, she was doing this because uh, women at that time, didn't you didn't even own your own children. If your husband uh, decided such that uh, you were no more of use to him, he could demand a voice and uh, he would own the children. You could be out in the street. If he died, uh, you didn't inherit his property. It would be will to the next man, man in the family, his brother, his father, if he was still living. But it wouldn't go to the woman. You were uh, too dainty or too delicate. Uh, uh, your task, your task for the day would have been is concern yourself with raising children and a family in a house. And so this is why these women of the suffrage movement demanded uh, representation. This is why I decided that uh, it would be universal suffrage. Why demand the freedom for, for the black man and have the black woman still in bondage? And the white woman, uh, you were as much, although you did have privilege. These women, uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, they, they had great privilege. Many people, uh, well, they criticized me for, for working uh, with the women, the white women. Uh, they said, you're an abolitionist, a black man fighting for uh, black rights. Uh, but I would say this to you, uh, well, uh, unity at the expense of purity. Unity at the expense of purity is not a women winning formula. If you think, if you can't form a coalition without somebody on, on your team or having a different point of view, uh, then it's not going to be a winning formula. The first objective is to conquer and divide, but divide and conquer. So if you are, uh, are developing a coalition of people, your ultimate goal is universal suffrage. Your ultimate goal is voting rights. And so if there are some, uh, some other particulars that you might not agree on, it doesn't mean you can't work together. And we found this out when the 15th Amendment was passed and we were fighting for the right for men to vote in citizenship. Uh, when that 15th Amendment came along, uh, women were told it's not your time. You have to stand aside. Well, there's where our differences came out. Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, they all were very, very angry because they were fighting and they thought that the 15th Amendment would include the woman's right to vote. And when that didn't happen, well, uh, some of the differences uh, between, uh, between myself and them came out, came to bear. And the newspapers, well, they, uh, uh, they uh, took advantage of that. They printed uh, some of the remarks by Susan B. Anthony about myself. It was no surprise to me. I knew they were white women. I knew Abraham Lincoln was a white man. That didn't prevent me from going to the White House and uh, encouraging him to help uh, black men fight in the, in the war. We had fought in the Revolutionary War. We did that, didn't we, not men? Uh, Chris Weeks Addicts. The black men in Massachusetts, Mom Bet, all these black people fought uh, for the founding of the country. And so we fought in the Revolutionary War. Why would not be fighting uh, in the Civil War to save the 